Here are some reminders to help you get the most out of your Dive Math 54 CDs. First, work the problems with me. Work every practice problem that I work and write down everything that I write down. Remember too that my practice problems, they aren't the same as the practice problems in that particular lesson that you're doing. They're similar, but they're not the same. So if you need some extra practice, do the ones in the book as well. Next, pause and rewind until you understand. This is one of the things that makes doing a lesson on a CD so much better than a live classroom is that you can rewind the teacher. You can just rewind and rewind until you understand a particular concept. So make sure and take advantage of that. Also, remember when you're working the practice problems, do a couple of them with me. Then if you think you understand how to do the next one, pause the CD, work it yourself, fast forward to the answer. If you got it right, great, go on to the next one. If you got it incorrect, rewind and see what you did wrong. You also need to make sure and do the facts practice, mental math, and problem solving section that's at the top of each lesson. Do one of those at least once per week. And those facts practice tests, you need to make at least a 90% or greater on those. Otherwise, you need to do them again. You should also time yourself on those facts practice tests and try to beat your previous time. Also remember to do all the problems in every problem set and also do all the tests that are in the test booklet and there are instructions in the test booklet as to when to take those tests. It's also important in Math 5.4 to show your work. You'll be doing lots of problems with multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction and you need to write down the steps and so you can see clearly how you're solving those problems. Don't use a calculator though. There's no need for a calculator at all in Math 5.4. So you can just leave your calculator alone and you can use that in a later course. And finally, have a good attitude. The best math program in the world won't make a bit of difference if you don't have a good, hard-working attitude. Be thankful that you have a nice computer with speakers and a cool CD lesson to work on and to learn from. Not everybody has that advantage that you have. God has given you a great opportunity here to have an excellent education and part of it is up to you as to your attitude and what you make of this opportunity. So work hard, do your best to learn these lessons and I know that God will bless you for that. Lesson 9 starts on page 31 and it's about adding with regrouping. Now in lesson 8 we learned about adding money together. So in this lesson, we'll just be adding one more step to what we learned in Lesson 8. Let's just learn this by doing some practice problems. Look at practice problem A. We want to add $36 to $17. Now this time we have the addition problem lined up vertically, but we still add the same way as if it was lined up horizontally. Let's start with the ones. We see that we have six ones and we need to add seven ones to that. So let's just go ahead and put some rectangles down. Two, three, four, five, six. And then we need to add seven ones to that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now that equals 13 ones, right? So what we mean by regrouping is that we need to take 10 of those ones, and so that would be this amount that I'm circling right now. That is equal to $10, right? 10 ones is equal to $10, and so we need to add one $10 bill to the 10 side. And so we have three, one, and let's just put a one up here at the top of our addition problem and we put it above the tens place. So that tells us that we're adding one $10 bill. Okay, so we added six and seven to get 13. We have three ones, therefore, and one 10 that we moved over, and we're gonna add the tens together now. So we have one 10 and then three and then another one. So that would be five tens altogether. And so that would be a total of $53, okay? So regrouping, just kind of think of that as what's the simplest way that we could write $13 using ones and tens? Well, we would use one ten and three ones. Like if you had 13 ones in your wallet, you probably wouldn't want 13 ones. That's just a lot of $1 bills. 
it would be easier to have one $10 bill and three ones. So when you regroup, you're trying to think of the simplest way that you can write that quantity. Let's do another one. 52 plus 9. Now, wait a second. These don't have dollar signs in front of them, but that really doesn't matter, right? We still add 52 and 9 the same way we would add $52 and $9. We do the exact same steps. So let's just go ahead and do that. Add the 9 and the 2 together, and that would give us 11, right? And so let's just write that over to the side. Now, we don't want to have 11 ones. We would want to break that into one $10 bill and one $1 bill, okay? So that $10 bill, there's one of those. We need to put it over in the tens column. And so we add just this $1 bill that I circled. That goes down here in the ones column, and then 5 plus 1 is 6. So 61, that's the result of 52 plus 9. And notice how in our answer or our sum, we put the 6. It's lined up with the tens column. It's lined up with that 5 and that 1 that are in the tens column. And then the 1 in 61, that's lined up with the ones column in our two add-ends. The 52 and the 9 are our add-ends, right? So sometimes it's better to do an addition problem lining it up vertically, and that helps us remember our place value a little bit better. Let's do another problem, 37 plus 15. Now, just like we said, it's sometimes easier to remember place value by lining the problems up vertically. So let's just go ahead and rewrite this, 37 plus 15, and write it vertically, okay? Now, add your 1's together, 7 and 5 is 12. And so that would really be easier to say 1, 10, and 2, 1's. And so let's just put a 2, or 2, 1's, and then we need to put the 1, 10 in the 10's column. And now we add 1, 3, and 1 together, and we get 5, 10's. So that would equal 52. Okay, let's do one more. $49 plus $15. Again, it's easier to keep up with our place value to write that problem vertically. So let's just rewrite it. And I won't worry about the dollar signs for right now. Add the 1's together, 9 and 5. That would be 14, right? So we need to say 1, 10, and 4, 1's. And so we put 4, 1's there in the 1's column and put 1, 10 over in the 10's column. 1 plus 4 plus 1 is 64. And let's put our dollar sign back in there. $64 would be the result of 49 and 15. Okay, well that's all for lesson 9.